So we are going to do um, some graphing today by hand. Um, when you do these graphs, you need to do them on a graph. So if you want to make your notability the grid paper, that's fine. What I've noticed is people who use the grid paper and notability when you submit it, if you don't select to turn paper on, I don't see your grids and therefore it looks to me like you didn't use graph paper and then I mark you off in the homework for not doing an accurate graph. So just make sure if you're going to use notability grid paper, when you click to submit, there's a, there's a little like toggle that needs to turn the paper on, okay? Um, so that it saves all your lines in there. Otherwise, I have graph paper at the bottom in that module that has like all the just general stuff. You can just take screenshots of those little graph papers, or you could even take screenshots of one of these and use that and drop it into your notes. That's fine too. Um, so just a heads up on that. Um, when we graph exponential functions by hand, um, there is this parent function, right? We've talked about parent functions before. The parent function is the like just basic function that we start with and everything kind of branches off of that parent function. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, so when you... I am, thank you, thank you. Um, when you use this parent function, okay, y equals a times b to the x power, this, the x, that's going to be your variable. The other things will have numbers in those places. So a and b will be substituted with other things. Um, b is going to be what we call a constant, okay? Um, and we'll talk a little more about a in a little bit, but your variable, your x that you're going to be plugging in, the domain for that is always going to be all real numbers. You'll be able to plug any value in for that x, okay? Um, so a will not equal zero, because if a equals zero, the whole thing equals zero. Um, b is going to be a number greater than one and not equal to one, okay? Exponential um, growth, okay, on our way up. Um, you can also have exponential decay, which we're going to get into in a little bit as well. But there is, with these graphs, with exponentials, there's something called an asymptote. Have you heard of an asymptote before? It's a weird word. Okay. Um, an asymptote is just a line in the graph that your graph is always approaching, but it will never hit it, which seems weird, right? Um, so like... This is not the best illustration of it because it looks like our red line here is hitting our green line. But basically, these two lines, the, the now mine is orange, the orange and the green will never touch, okay? It is always getting closer and closer and closer, but it's just always splitting the difference and it never gets to the line, okay? So that's an asymptote. Um, and the asymptote is going to be y equals zero. What is the line y equals zero? your x-axis, right? So our asymptote is going to be the x-axis, um, which is also the line y equals zero. If you want to write that in as x-axis, you totally can. Um, okay. I think I explained all that I was going to with that. We're going to do a little bit of graphing, okay? Um, I do want you to draw your asymptote in because it's just a good representation of where our graph is going to be stopping essentially, um, not stopping, but not going below. So when you graph an exponential function, here's what we do. Um, you're going to have your equation, y equals 2 to the x power is what we have. Um, and we're just going to do a t-chart. We're going to set it up with um, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2, and then figure out when we plug those in, what do we get? So you're going to want your calculator today a lot. Um, and we're going to do some plugging and chugging a little bit. So this is going to be 2 to the 0 power, which all of you should know. What is anything to the 0 power? It's 1, okay? Um, so 2 to the 0 power, you get 1, okay? Um, 2 to the first power is? 
two. Two to the second power. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm just taking this number and I'm dropping it in here, right? Um, two to the second power, four. Okay, now, the ones everybody loves, negative powers. Two to the negative first power. What is that? One half, right? That equals one over two to the first power, right? So that's one half. And then two to the negative second power is one over two to the second power. So it's one fourth, okay? Okay, um, so those are your points. And then we just plot them. Zero, one. Um, one, two, two, four, negative one, a half, negative two, a fourth, um, and then draw that as best you can. Mine are always terrible. I'm really sorry. That was actually not my worst ever. Um, your asymptote is a dotted line right here. Okay, so there's our asymptote. What's the domain of this graph? What X values can you have? All real numbers, All real numbers always, okay? All real numbers for your domain. Your range is what? Greater than zero. Greater than zero. Good catch on the not doing the equal to. Y is greater than zero. It's never going to hit zero, so it's not greater than or equal to. It's always going to be greater than zero. Okay? All right, second one. Um, PEMDAS, right? PEMDAS matters here. Please, please, please follow the rules of PEMDAS. So... Are we going to multiply the two times three first or take three to the power first? Three to the power, three to the power. okay? Don't forget that. If you do it wrong, you get a really funky graph. Um, so if we plug in a zero, this is two times three to the zero power. Basically, we're saying two times what? Three to the zero is one, right? So two times one is two. Okay, um, second one would be two times three to the first power. That is what? Six, right? Um, two times three to the second power is? 18. Then it's two times three to the negative first. What is that? Two thirds. Okay, this is two times three to the negative first is one third. So two times a third is two thirds. And then it's two times three to the negative second. That is what? Two ninths. Two okay. Um, basically two times one over three to the second power, right? So one ninth times two is two ninths. Okay. So we plot it. Our asymptote is here, always the x-axis. Um, and then we have zero, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, 218 goes way off the graph, so I'm just not even gonna plot that one right now. Negative one, two thirds would be about here. And then negative two, two ninths would be about there. And then we draw uh, our curve. Questions on that? Can you just zoom in just a little bit? Yes. On the graph or on the numbers? On the numbers, please. Okay. Now this next one, I want you to take a look at what we had for these first two, right? Two to the X, two times three to the X, and look at your graph on that, okay? It was, what is that for you guys? Did I do that the right way? Swooping up as you moved to the right, okay? Now look at this one. Y equals one half to the X power. Let's see what this does. Um, if I plug in a zero, I'm saying one half to the zero power. What is that? It's one, right? Anything to the zero power is one. 
1 half to the first power. What's that? 1 half. Um, 1 half to the, I should really do this, sorry. 1 half to the second power is what? 1 fourth. Um, you're taking 1 to the second and 2 to the second, right? So 1 fourth. Okay, then it's 1 half to the negative first power. What happens there? You flip, right? To make it a positive. So basically it's two over one to the first power is how you can think of that. Um, so that's two. And then it's one half to the negative second power. So flip that two over one to the positive second power or two to the second power is four. Okay, now plot those points. Zero, one, one, one half, two, one fourth, negative one, two, and negative two, four. Now this one goes the other way. Asymptote's still that x-axis, um, but now it's kind of on its way down, okay? We call these ones exponential growth. As you work to the right, it's increasing. We call these ones, the second ones, exponential decay. It's decreasing as you go, getting smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? So growth versus decay, um, and that's what we're going to talk about right now is different growth and decay models. Um, so here's how exponential growth works, okay? Um, you don't really have a lot of notes to take right here. I gave you all the details, so just watch. Um, for exponential growth, as your x increases, your y will also increase, okay, when it's exponential growth. So in this general parent function setup, your b value, okay, we call that your growth factor, right? B is your growth factor, what you're growing by. Um, that number is always going to be greater than one. Any thoughts as to why that might be? What is one? One's kind of the number of like completion, right? A hundred percent. One is a hundred percent. So if the number is bigger than one, that means you have more than a hundred percent. You grew, right? That's a growth factor, okay? Um, that's usually population or money, the value of something. That's when we talk about exponential growth a lot of the time. Um, exponential decay is different. That's as your X value increases, then your Y value is going to start going down. Okay. Um, so it's still the same parent function, but now notice this, your B value is going to be between zero and one. It's not going to be zero. It's not going to be one. It's going to be something in between there. Okay, I think a lot of times when people think, oh, decay, it's got to be negative. It's not negative. It's a fraction, right? If I said, you know, one half of something, that's 50%. So we're shrinking to less of a percent, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. Exponential decay will be a fraction of what you started with. So like 97%, right, is shrinking from the 100% that it started as. Um, so that's half-life, bacteria, the value of a car, unfortunately, really has a lot of exponential decay. Um, then, sorry for the gap, that's just a break in the page. These should be right underneath that. Um, your domain for these will always be all real numbers. Your range, your y is always going to be greater than zero, okay, just like we showed earlier. And then there's always going to be a y-intercept. And it's going to be the point zero A. That's this A right here. So whatever that number is in front of your growth factor, that's your y-intercept. It's kind of your starting point, okay, your initial point that we're working with. So that's exponential growth and decay info. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at this, and we're going to determine, is it a growth or a decay model? And what will your y-intercept be? Okay, so just keep in mind, we're working from y equals a times b to the x power. This is your growth factor. This is your intercept, right? Growth factor, intercept. 
y-intercept, that is. Um, okay, so with this in mind, would you say letter A there is a growth or decay model? Decay. This number is between 0 and 1, right? 0.95, you think of it like a percent, 95% of something is decaying from the 100% that it started as. Um, so this is a decay model. And what's your y-intercept? 12. Do you understand why this is going to be your y-intercept every time? Think about what a y-intercept does. Your x value is what? Zero. zero. So if I'm plugging a zero in right here, 0.95 to the zero power is one. So it's always going to equal what's in front of that because that number times one, right? Um, so that's decay and your y-intercept is going to be 12. Okay. Letter B, 0.25 times 10 to the x power. Is that a growth model or a decay model? That's growth. Okay, this number is greater than one. So this is a growth model. Um, and what's your y-intercept? 0.25, your a term. That number out in front is your y-intercept. Okay, okay um, sorry, I missed a word. You put $1,000 into a bank account. That CD grows at 2% annually. Is that a growth model or a decay model? growth, right? It's increasing. We're getting 2% more money every time. So that's growth. Um, what's your, sorry, I guess I can put that here. What's your y-intercept for that? Thousand. The thousand. It's your starting point, okay? A is your starting point. So in this case, your y-intercept would be a thousand. All right. Questions on that? Okay. My test people, I'm going to give you your test real quick. Um, proceed. Um, so with these growth and decay models, a lot of times what you'll be looking at, this y equals a times b to the x, the a is going to be your initial amount, your starting point. The b, like we said, is your growth factor. And then the x, the variable, typically represents time. So weeks, years, days, months, they'll tell you, they'll specify, but just pay attention to what they say the variable is, because sometimes it'll ask a question like, how many days is that? But they said it was hours, so you have to do a little bit of converting, okay? Um, so example three here, um, you are going to want your calculator for this. So if you didn't get your calculator out before, get it out now. Um, this one says... You have 100 bacteria, and they're doubling every hour. Okay, so we're going to try and come up with a y equals a times b to the x for that. Um, so y equals, what's your initial amount? 100. Okay, so y equals 100 times, and then what would your growth factor be? Two, right? They're doubling. So if they're doubling, your growth factor is two. And then the time, okay, is our variable. Like we said, X is always going to be the variable. X is always going to be the thing that's changing for you. Um, you can put in different values for that X. So Y equals um, 100 times two to the X power, where X is going to equal our hours. Okay. You don't have to write that down in the homework. I'm just writing it so you know what we're dealing with here. Um, so it says, how many bacteria after one hour? What do you do? You plug in a one. So 100 times two to the first power. And again, PEMDAS matters, right? Do the exponent first and then multiply. So two to the first power is two. 100 times two is 200. So after one hour, now you have 200 bacteria. What would you have after two hours? What do you do with that? Plug in a 2. 100 times 2 to the second power. What is that? 400. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 100 is 400. Okay. After one day, what do you do? Plug in 24. We're talking X is hours, right? So plug in a 24. 100 times 2 to the 24th power. Go ahead and plug that into your calculator. It's a large number. Um, you get, hopefully you left a little bit of space, 1.6 billion. 
1.6 billion, 1 billion, 677,721, sorry, 677 million, 721,600. It's a large number. It's a lot of bacteria in one day, right? That's, uh, that's exponential growth for you. It grows real fast. Okay, um, I'm going to give you another model that we're going to work with. It's called percent increase, and this is a slightly different formula, but you'll notice it really isn't, okay? It's really pretty much the same formula that we've been working with, um, with a slight change, okay? So think of this as A times B to the X, right? It's essentially the same thing. Um, it's just your B is gonna be one plus R. When your rate, okay, R is representing a rate, it's a percent as a decimal, right? So if I said 75%, I would plug in a 0.75. So if it was 75%, we'd be plugging in 0.75. The reason being, we're talking percent increase, right? So if it grows 75%, that's actually 175% of what it was, okay? If you just do the 75%, that's shrinking down to 75% from the 100% that it started as, right? Um, so that's why we add the one to these guys every time. So A is still your initial amount. R stands for rate, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and T is gonna be your time, okay? And we're just gonna plug into this formula to see what a percent increase will look like. So here's what it says, you invest $1,500 in an account that pays 1.5% annual interest. The equation for that, do you want to try it? Y equals, what's going to come first? 1,500. That's your initial amount. Okay. Then it's times, it's always one plus. What is R going to be? Be careful. 0.015, right? 1.5 as a percent. When we turn it into a decimal, we divide by 100. So it's going to be 0.015. So always take the percent and turn it into the decimal. Divide by 100, okay? Um, and then the equation is always going to have a variable here. And we're just going to plug in for T eventually. Okay, so that's your general equation for this. Um, a better way to say it would probably be y equals 1,500 times 1.015 to the t power, right? So you can add these together so you don't have to put in the plus every time. Um, just simplify it a little bit. So 1,500 times 1.015 to the t power. So the question is, if this is our percent increase that's happening, how much money would you have after three years? What do you do with that? Plug in a three for T. So it's gonna be Y equals 1,500 times 1 1.015 to the third power, okay? Plug that into your calculator. What do you get? 1,568.517563. Okay, so now think about what's the best answer you can give for that. Right, we're talking money, right? So we're gonna round to as far as we can with money, which is gonna be the nearest cent. So this is gonna be $1,568.52, okay? So then when it asks how much after 20 years, you plug in a 20. Y equals 1,500 times 1 1.015 to the 20th power, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you a much simpler way to do these problems when they ask you multiple times how much something is um, so that you don't have to plug so many numbers in every time. So real quick, quick siesta from the notes and I'm gonna jump to my calculator for you. Okay, so on that first one, you plugged in 1,500 times 
1.015 to the, right, here's your little carrot that you guys are using for that, to the third power. Okay, so that was the first answer you got, hopefully, right? Okay, now rather than have to plug all that in again for the next one, here's what you can do. If you go second, and then see it says entry right here, that takes your last thing and just replugs it in for you, and then all you have to do is go back here, so arrow back twice and enter 20, and you can change it. Sometimes it comes in real handy because you had a really long equation and you're just trying to change one thing. So second entry, okay, will get you that. So if I wanted to do it again, second, enter, and now I can just arrow back and change my variable to whatever I want to change it to, okay? So you're just going to go from your screen here, second, and then enter, and now you can just arrow back to change anything that you want to change, okay? Okay. Back to the notes. Um, so after 20 years, we got 2020. So $2,020 and 28 cents. Okay. Okay. Um, now this next part asks a different question. It says, how long will it take to have $4,000? Um, and for these ones right now, you're just gonna do kind of a guess and check model and see when, when you get there. Again, this is why it's super helpful to do the second enter, okay? Um, so I'm gonna show you on here what that would look like on my end if guessing and checking gives you a little bit of trouble or anxiety. Um, if you look at what's happened after three years, it was $1,500 ish, right? After 20 years, it was $2,000. Um, so we're trying to figure out when would we get to 4,000? Okay. Um, what would you guess? Give me a number. Don't plug it in necessarily yet. I just want to know what you, what your thoughts would be. A hundred. A hundred. 60. Um, okay, so go second, enter, and let's just check after 100 years, so arrow back, after 100 years, you'll be at 6,648, okay? I heard 60, so second, enter. Now try 60. Okay. That one's getting close, 3,664. Um, what would you try next? 65. 65, okay, so second, enter, arrow back, and try a five now. Ooh, that's so close. Try one more. Second, enter, now try 66. That got us there, right, 4,000? So it's just, it's a matter of trying to think like, okay, what seems like it's going to make sense? And you kind of narrow it down. Have you ever watched The Price is Right? It reminds me of the game where it's like, um, I, forget, I don't know what it's called, but it's higher, it's lower, it's higher. You know, like they're trying to figure it in a speed way. Yours doesn't have to be speed, but guess and check um, until we get to the point of pushing us over that number. Okay, so we plugged in 66. Um, when you get that, you get 4,000, oops, that's not what I want, 4,007.28, thank you, um, so you're going to put that in as 4,000, right, this is what we got for our first year that we passed the 4,000 threshold, um, so we're going to say after 66 years. Okay, questions on that? All right, um, here's an exponential decay problem. So it says you won $100,000 on a game show and you spend half the money every week, okay? So 
exponential decay here. Um, this isn't a percent increase, right? This isn't gonna be the one plus the rate because we're decaying. So now you gotta go back to what's my exponential decay model. That's this guy. Okay, so part of this is determining like what equation am I actually using here? Um, this one we're gonna use y equals a times b to the x because it's decay. So y equals, what's your a value? 100,000. Okay, and then it, it says you spend half the money every week. What's your decay factor? 0. 0.5, one half. Um, you may write that either way. I don't mind a 0. 0.5. I'm going to do the one half, um, but you may do 0. 0.5. Actually, I feel like I probably would plug 0. 0.5 into the calculator, but I just like the fraction look better. So um, to the x power, right? So that's your equation. Initial amount, decay factor to the variable. Um, so how much would you have after two weeks? Now, here's the deal. Some of you are going to do that in your head very quickly, right? If it gets cut in half for the first week, that's how much? It's half of 100,000. 50,000, right? And then the next week you spend half of it again. So how much do you have after the second week? 25,000. So if it's one you can do in your head, go for it. Like that's totally fine. Um, if you prefer just to plug it into your calculator, then plug in a two, right? This is 100,000 times one half to the second power or times 0.5 to the second power. You can do that too. Okay, same thing. Um, okay, so here's the, the sad one. Got a sad face there. How much would that person have after 10 weeks if they spent half their earnings every week? $97.66. That's how all these rich people go broke, right? They're just spending their money and they don't realize how quickly it goes away. Um, it's the lottery for you. Um, so $100,000 times 0.5 or times one half to the 10th power. So after 10 weeks, they will only have $97.66. Sad. Okay, um, last one. So we did percent increase. This is percent decrease. What's the only difference in this equation? It's minus instead of plus, right? Decrease subtracts, increase adds right there. So from 100% decrease, if we decrease by 25%, now we have 75% of what it was, right? We're subtracting it. So this says a car depreciates at 12.5% per year, which is so sad. So sad. Spend a lot of money on a car and it's not worth anything the, the second you take it off the lot. Um, so we're gonna try and come up with an equation for that. What would that look like? What's A? 30,000, brand new, it was a $30,000 car. So that's your initial amount, your starting amount. And then we will do one minus what number? 0.125, right? 12.5% divide by 100 moves your decimal point two to the left every time, okay? 0.125 um, to the T power, okay? So better way to write that, Y equals 30,000 and then just simplify one minus 0.125. So that's gonna be 0 0.875 to the T power. Okay, so here is your simplest equation for that. So the question is, what's the value of the car in one year? What do you get? 26,250, right? You just take this equation you drop in a one for your T and you get $26,250. So it lost $3,800 in value. Um, oh no, it didn't, it started at 30. Oh yeah, it did. Um, what would it be after seven years? What's that car worth? 11,780.88, right? You're just doing 30,000 times 
875 to the seventh power, okay? So then the question is, when will it be worth $5,000? So take a look at what we've done. In one year, it was 26. After seven years, it was 117. Um, what do you want to try? <laughs> Did you already plug it in? Uh, so pick a number. He picks 14. Okay, if you plug that in, 30,000 times 0.875 to the 14th power, you get this number. Okay. Um, which is very close to 5,000, right? What direction do we have to go to try another number? 13. 13. So plug in 30,000 times 0.875 to the 13th power. Uh, remember, second enter, and then just change that 14 to a 13, and you get this number. Okay, so if those are our numbers at 13 and 14, it says, when will it be worth $5,000? When? Somewhere in that 13th year, right? Not right at the beginning of the 13th year, but somewhere between 13 and 14 years, it's worth $5,000, okay? And we're not gonna make you go any more specific than that. Just give me somewhere between um, 13 and 14 years. Be kind of mean if I made you tell me like the month and the day, right? Figure that out. Um, any questions on that? <laughs> 